Hello and welcome to Monday. This is Community Coffee by Cosmo Quest, and I am your host, Jillian Rhodes. It is um, early on a Monday morning for most of you. Uh, I have already lived through most of Monday, and I can say that it is not so terrible, except for the fact that I spent half of it 150% convinced that it was Saturday. Um, and that was a, an interesting moment when I realized that actually it is not Saturday, it is Monday. And I was happily surprised to discover that people were actually working when um, and answering messages that I was sending them. Anyway, today is uh, Monday, which is uh, every Monday you can join me to steam ahead into the week. See what I did there. Um, to talk about the fusion of uh, astronomy and art and all of the um, interesting crossovers and fusions and fissions, perhaps, that uh, come about. Um, so today, I'm super excited. I have a guest today. It's not just me blathering to the camera. Um, so I have a uh, an awesome guest. You probably know her, and if you don't, you will. She's one of the newest team members of Cosmo Quest. Um, she also works with SETI Institute. So, um, and she's here very early in the morning, which is amazing. So <laughs> thank you for joining me, Beth. I'm happy, really to, happy to be here despite it being 7.30 in the morning, my time. Yes, and you were answering messages from 6.30, so. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> and the, the cats are, the cats are, all present and accounted for trying to get me to feed them, but I'm not right now. <laughs> yeah, I just love the little black hole hanging out in the background. It just adds, it adds a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Beth, uh, can you just, I mean, I, I, I quickly said something, but I don't know half of what you've done and what you're doing. So, um, you know, just quickly introduce yourselves, tell us who you are and how you came to be here. Uh, I am the social media uh, coordinator for SETI Institute. Uh, that's the hat I'm currently wearing today. Um, I'm also a communication specialist for Planetary Science Institute, and that's not the hat I'm wearing right this moment. I will wear it later for Daily Space. Um, I've been working there for about five years, and I've been handling all of their social media, and we've been trying over the last year to do more of a community building uh, experience instead of just, here's a science story, have a nice day, you know? And what I started doing was I realized I wasn't posting every day of the week on, on Twitter. I was posting Monday through Saturday and then Sunday I just let it fall off. And I was watching my numbers drop, which, you know, as a social media person, you go, Oh God, my numbers are dropping. I can't have that. And I thought, what can I do that will be fun but won't require me to try and dig out more science stories on a Sunday, which are nearly impossible. So I thought, well, SciArt, we'll make SciArt Sundays. And I started digging through my Twitter feeds and looking for uh, artists who were doing space themed art, um, you know, astronomy, planetary science, things like that. And I basically share a few every Sunday and try and give those guys some exposure because I can do that and um you know let them have sort of a, a place where like I'll share their stuff and my manager thought it would be a great idea if we could build a community so we thought well let's take what we've started with SciArt Sundays and let's see if we can get those people to come join us on Facebook and give them art challenges and have them work on art topics that are thematic to what we do and then we could share those out again and we could give even more exposure and say, look, here's some, you know, here's what these artists are doing for us. Come play. And so we've been building that community and, and you came in and then you also came into CosmoQuest all at the same time. And it just seemed like, well, this is perfect. That's, that's, some, that's why I'm here with you. And, and that's why you're now a moderator on our new Facebook group. Yeah, I, I kind of um, stormed into back into astronomy from a long hiatus and just kind of put it into everything that I was doing all at once. Um, so you, you uh, 
you've made now this this group, um, which is which is called the Art Imaginarium, which is a fascinating um, a fascinating title, and I'd be interested to know kind of where that came from. But also, like, what is it? Just the 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 kind of ultimate goal of this group is to kind of build community, or do you have something more in mind, like bringing all the artists together and and um, and giving them challenges to to kind of give them exposure? So, what's kind of your 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 vision for for this group? My goal is to bring together community. Um, as a social media person, sometimes I find that social media itself is very distant. So you can put stuff on Facebook, you can put stuff on Instagram, but there's not necessarily a lot of interaction back and forth unless people are asking you questions. Whereas what I want to do is I love, and I have to say this is partly CosmoQuest's fault, I love the community that CosmoQuest has built here, both on Twitch and on Discord and across you know, YouTube and on all of that stuff. It's, I love it. I love this community that we have. And I would love to see SETI have the same kind of community. So we needed a starting point. We started with art. Um, I would like to get into maybe some flash fiction and using a, a different group for that effect. And then at some point in time, being able to pull these people into a discord and actually have them talk and communicate, collaborate and, and do all of what we kind of do for Cosmo Quest, but do that for SETI and have them have a community too. So I feel like it would be great if we could get SETI to not be quite so distant from the public. And this was one of the ways I felt was a great way to engage people and bring them in. Yeah, art does have a tendency to do that, <laughs> kind of what art does. So what have you seen so far in the group? You know, um, I think there's been two challenges as far as I know. Um, so mm -hmm. what kind of have you seen happening? Have you seen that community kind of growing, uh, you know, I have actually, uh, I'm really, I was really impressed with, we started it in mid-April. So we've been going about a month and we started our first challenge was the Trappist One exoplanetary system. And we kind of threw it out there as a, this seems like a good place to start. And it's broad enough that people can do different things with it. You choreographed an amazing dance to it. I thought that was so much fun. Um, and you exposed me to the sounds of the Trappist system, which was really neat. So uh, Jillian actually used a soundtrack that gives the um, resonances of the Trappist One planets. And she used that as the basis for her choreography. And it, it's great. And on top of that, we had lots of different types of visual artists. So we had more graphic design. We had painting we had uh, digital art. I mean, there were some really beautiful pieces and we had some silly ones. You know, people took the, the Trappist Belgian connection and did beer themed pieces. So it was a lot of fun. And I noticed that people are talking more and some of the artists are kind of collaborating and hi, cat number two. And um, so when we decided on a June or May theme, we decided let's go with the Drake equation. First off, classic SETI, right? If you're into SETI, you know the Drake Equation. Second off, Frank Drake, the creator of the Drake Equation, is celebrating his 90th birthday on May 28th. And we thought this would be a great way to maybe show him how his equation is still influential and loved and people are still fascinated by it. And within the first week of this month, I'd already had multiple pieces submitted. So people are really enjoying the challenges and the themes. And um, as we get further on, I'd like to kind of take it to the community and say, what do you guys want to work on and, and give options so that it's not just here, work on these things. And my big purpose here, of course, is building community. So I don't want to, I don't want to push anybody in any direction they don't want to go. So I've tried to kick back let you, let my other moderator, uh, Danielle, who is also, a, she's a, a known artist. She's done a lot of work for the Institute and various science institutions. I'll let you guys kind of handle a lot of it because I don't want, <laughs> not even going to play, no skill in drawing whatsoever, but I love seeing what everybody else is doing. So aside from just kind of handing off themes, sending out information, we've gotten Seth Shostak to do a couple videos to introduce people to the topics. Um, we're hoping to bring some more scientists in so that we can connect you with them and 
let them kind of tell you about their work too. And so we have, we have plans. We have plans. <laughs> um, you know what I think what's particularly interesting about this group that I've seen is that it, it's, it's so diverse, you know, the, the artists are working in just such an incredibly different range of mediums and, and I, you know, ideas like every artist is because I think when you, you normally think of, you know, art and astronomy, it's like the artist's interpretation, right? Um, you know, the artist's illustration and it's like kind of an actual, you know, um, <laughs> I'm sorry if there's background noise, there's a street behind me. So anyway, um, but <laughs> so the, you know, every artist is bringing just incredibly different, you know, things to the table. I do think I'm the only dancer in the group. Currently are the only dancer. I, I, I do hope that changes. So this is, this is our, our group. Um, so obviously you can see this is our, our Facebook challenge. Our internal graphic designer makes me great graphics. Her name is Jasmine. She's also a moderator. She puts together just amazing stuff and I love these. So um, I love that we put the, the painter's palette down here uh, for the S for our question mark. Um, so just kind of scrolling through. So this is, this is the story on the latest challenge and this piece of artwork is this is done by Danielle Futsalar and she's been doing sort of some of our work for us for a while. And so when she put this one together, I thought it was a great kickoff to show everybody sort of what, um, what can be done with the Drake equation if you really want to, you know, do something this direction. But people have definitely had uh, different interpretations. So just a couple... I'll bring up the May challenge post so far. So this is from J. Rob Man Montana. Fractions of stars with planets. So exploring the cosmos, he's kind of done a almost a movie poster style. And uh, I really like this. Um, and uh, he tells about how he did it. So this is Procreate app on his iPad and you know, I, I think that's amazing that people are doing stuff on their iPads. Um, you've done a dance. So, I mean, there's no sound, so I don't want to, I don't want to subject anybody to a, a soundless dance. Um, <laughs> Danielle has done another piece of artwork for it. So here's, here's her most recent piece, which I think is just astounding. I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. Oh, and it's yeah. different from her previous interpretation. And then she's done this one, which is kind of more of a, an explanatory poster style, which I think is a great infographic that we can use. I love this, blah, 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 blah. Really hope. And then this was the first one, and I thought, wow. It, she's done this one where the pieces of the equation are within the phone cord to call home. So... Oh. I, I really love the, the kind of art that we're getting and it's just a mix. So that's been really fun. Um, and then there's this one, which I like too, the alien talking and, and showing Frank's equation. I think that he would really appreciate that, especially because it looks like to me that he's kind of mimicked Frank's handwriting, which is um, what is in the header. So we've, mm. we've done... Um, I'm impressed that, you know, we're only a couple weeks in and we've already had like quite a bit of art submitted. So that's, that's amazing to me. And the April one was fun. So let me just show you guys some of this too. We had a, a new comic strip just submitted. And that's the, the other great thing about this group. Um, I wanted to make it not stressful for artists. I don't want this to be like, oh my God, you have another deadline. You have to, you have to fight. Um, so they're allowed to, everybody can work on whatever challenges they feel like working on. So if, if you're not, yeah, you kind of just, whenever you're ready, you put it in. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we can put, we can do the Trappist system for forever. Um, but I, you know, like this one's great. Mm. I love, this is one of my favorites. I just love the style and the color of it. And, you know, the, the way that she's shown the the transits and everything is just 
really brilliant to me. And of course, here's one that's painted. So it's it's the birth of the Trappist One system, showing all of the planets kind of coming out. Um, Adam Makarenko, he's a, a miniature artist, and uh, he's his this actual work here. Um, he does models of exoplanets, um, and I'm really glad that he came to join the group because I love his work. These are actually physical models of each of the Trappist planets, and this is based on the standard NASA artist illustration that was sent out with all the Trappist press releases. But he's actually modeled these physically and lit them so that they match the photo. And then, so you could like go to his studio and hold these in the palm of your hand. And then he shared that with us and basically said anybody could use it. Wow. Um, yeah, so we've had some, so here's, here's Danielle's silly contribution. Um, it's cool, it's Belgian, but it's not beer. <laughs> <laughs> So she's she's been having some fun with that. She was not the only beer themed uh, submission. This one kind of got some popularity on Instagram. This is a surface sample of Trappist One E, which I thought that was kind of a really cool, unique little take on it. Just find yeah. some stuff, throw it together, and, and yeah. make it look like a soil sample. And you know, yeah. it's things like that that you know I wouldn't have thought of. Here's yours with our your red star at the center. And then here's here's another one of the beer themed ones. So here's all the various Belgian beers. So we, I really thought that I I feel like this has had a very good start. But I want I'm greedy. I want more. I want more artists. I want more people coming in and sharing what they do. So I'm trying to get Pamela uh, to come in and, and do like a planet, and maybe we can do that on on a live stream or something and combine it all together. So I'm I'm all about bringing all of these worlds kind of literally and figuratively together. So, you know, more of the science, more of the art, and just smush. And I'm really excited about how this is going. Yeah, um, it's uh, oh, whatever was about to come out of my mouth just went somewhere else instead. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there was uh, Astrowise is saying in the chat. Um, I know some kids who made music from Trappist data. If you're interested um, in the in the link to that, so uh, basically, like you know, uh, th this is exactly what I was looking for when I was doing the doing my choreography. Is that because the Trappist planets are in such you know this incredible you know orbital resonance. So it, it lends itself very nicely to making music. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that's kind of cool about that particular system. Um, but so, so you know, the, the group is really interesting and people are asking to join. You know, I'm, my moderator, like the notifications are going off. I'm just seeing on, on my, that my Facebook that people are asking to join. So maybe they're watching the feed and getting inspired, which is totally awesome. Um, but just kind of generally stepping away from the group itself, thinking about like how, you know, besides just kind of bringing the SETI kind of institute closer to the community, um, why do you think that art and SETI is, is, is a good match for each other? Well, I think that art is its, its own language. And as people who are looking for different forms of intelligence, I think bringing art into it is important. Um, music in its own is mathematical, but it's also emotional. Um, the same with you know painting and graphic design. Yes, you can be all angles and measurements, but you're still trying to evoke a response. And I think that's really important when it comes to looking for life elsewhere, is if we're looking for intelligent life and not just microbial life, which we're gonna find first, but if we're looking for intelligent life, we need to be able to look in all kinds of different ways and being able to look at how art works and how we can share that with other people, I think is really important to being able to recognize what some really here's pi, here's, you know, this equation, you know, things that you, you know, a lot of people think that's going to be what we'll understand, but maybe it will be art. We sent our own um, golden record out with Voyager and there was music on it. 
So it wasn't just, you know, scientific facts of here's our planet and here's what our people look like, blah, blah, blah. It was here's some cultural stuff that, you know, you can use to recognize this. And I think that's a really, I, I think we've lost that a little bit and I want to bring, and we want to bring it back. So we're trying to put that back in to sort of the and not just be STEM, but make that STEAM. Right. And I, I was going to, I was actually going to mention the, the Voyager golden record. Um, uh, I, I used a, a piece that was on it for my May challenge, um, which was a piece that I've never heard before. It was uh, Blind Willie Johnson's Dark Was the Night, Cold Was the Ground. Um, and uh, I just thought it was such a beautiful title. It was just, and 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 the, the, the piece itself is really lovely too. And I, I was looking through the list, you know, cause I wanted, I knew I wanted to kind of have a song that came from the Voyager of Golden Records. So I was looking through the list and, you know, it's such a mix of, you know, different cultures and different music styles and, um, you know, I just thought it was it was interesting to think about, you know, if there is ever first contact, you know, art might be the only way that we can, you know, communicate. And be, uh, but it also might not because like art relies on so many like um, symbols and, you know, understanding. And share and shared experiences and, and things that we have culturally that maybe they don't. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, because for example, I can do a movement in really anywhere in the world, you know, something like this, right? And everybody around the world is more or less going to know what I mean. But if somebody doesn't have that symbol, right, they might not actually know. <laughs> Um, if, you, if you combine it with different styles, if you combine it with different art forms, so if it's it's a combination with music and the music is jarring at the time that you do that, that could also give the impression of, oh, okay, I don't necessarily like that sound. It's telling me to stop doing what I'm doing. So, you know, if you start combining those things, you might be able to explain the symbols as you go. Right. And I, and I think that's helpful. And it might be how we interpret what we get from someplace else. Right. Um, so the one thing that I was, um, you know, it's, it's when you really kind of get into it, it really, um, hold on a second while I search for a PC way of saying this. It's like a, a, a mind bomb, shall we say, you know, like it, when you when you really get into thinking about this, where it's just like, do you think aliens would make art? Right. And and how would we even know the different like how would we recognize what they're making is as art, you know, and maybe, you know, what, is, what would that even look like? You know, I, I would just, I, I, I went down that rabbit hole when I was preparing for the show and just like lost my brain. Um. <laughs> it's, it's a fascinating topic. And, and the great thing is, is that it's, it becomes, when you start to get into these, well, what, what could happen? They're not necessarily science, they're more philosophy. So you can, you can play with it all you want. You can figure, you can, you know, think a billion thoughts about it and express them. And you might not be wrong. You might not be right, but who cares? It's the thinking that matters and it's bringing us into the equation and not just being, okay, here's these numbers, like for the Drake equation, here's these letters, they mean things. What, you know, we're basically trying to determine what the pro probability of life, uh, other life is in the universe. But we need to talk about more than just the math. So I really am enjoying bringing in, you know, the, the more artistic, philosophical side of things and letting people interpret what they want to interpret, because those interpretations could lead us to breakthroughs. Right. I mean, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, art is what makes us human in, in so many ways, right? So the question is, like, you know, if you know we're going out and representing ourselves to the you know to the universe who might be better to represent you know a human than an artist right than some mad you know powered hungry person something like this you know that's i i you know maybe maybe if you know there's ever a, a universal congress and i'm still alive i would be happy to be the representative <laughs> 
know, I mean, even if you even if you look at things like Star Trek, you know, there's a lot of art in Star Trek, right? They they have their holodecks. They're still doing, you know, reading books and listening to music and and doing plays, and and they still have all of those sort of entertainment kinds of things. And they don't lose that. So obviously, you know, we consider it important. If, if we put it in there, we must have considered it important enough to keep it. And so I I think that. You know, like I said, I, I, I feel like we lost it a little bit along the way and now we're finally starting to get it back. And I'm here to I'm here for it. I'm here to encourage it. I may not be able to draw anything. I can't even draw a circle, but I am here to encourage those people who have those skills to use them and and hope that, you know, we, we learn more from it than we would have if we didn't have it there. So it, I'm just thrilled with how it's going. That's awesome. Um and uh, so, so what's next? Kind of, what's the next step? Is gather more people, um, start a Discord, start more people talking. Is you know, what's the what's the plan going forward? I think right now it's it's sort of continue build the, to build the community. Um, I don't I don't want to push it. I want it to be as, as organic as possible. So I don't want it to be like, okay, now that we have three hundred people, we are going to do the next step. I just kind of want to let this one build for a while and see where we go. And like I said, I think one of the next things on my list is to maybe do a flash fiction group, either um, possibly on, on Tumblr where there's a lot of little flash fiction writing going on um, so that we kind of spread it out and build the community in as many places and bring as many people in as we can that aren't just hardcore science people or science enthusiasts. That's a great audience. I want more. And so I want to reach those people. And so if I do it through art, if I do it through fiction, that's how I want to get them. That's awesome. Yes. Full steam ahead. Full steam <laughs> ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the, um, I guess the, that's all the questions that I have. Um, if anybody has questions that they would like or comments that they would like to throw into this. Um, eh, we can take the time for that. Uh, I just saw that um, I wanted to read it because it was really interesting. Uh, Nancy wrote in the chat, I remember the Star Trek Voyager episode where they found a planet whose inhabitants had never heard new of music and they treated the doctor as a superstar. He taught them how to make music, in other words, the math behind it, and then they never had a use for him afterward. They saw the music as a way of expressing math. Um, and I think that's really, um, that's quite interesting. Um, I, I wrote a short story at some point about a world in which people had forgotten how to sing. And there was like a wizard doctor who, you know, came and taught them how to sing again. And they thought that it was like such a weird thing for someone to do. There's, wow, I can, now that, now that I'm starting to think of fiction, I can think of so many things. There's an entire, uh, um, and the Caffrey series, it's a bit called The Crystal Singer, where she actually uses different notes to cut crystals um, oh. that are used for power. So you have to have the talent and the know-how. Um, there's an entire fantasy series called The Magic of Recluse, where all of their magic is done through music. So depending on how you do it, you know, what your skill is, singing or, or playing or whatever, that's how you actually make magic happen. Um, and I love Astro YYZ said they should have sent a poet. She's quoting, they're quoting the, uh, um, from Contact and that moment where uh, Jodie Foster's character, Ellie, actually like gets to the, you know, all of, through all of the travel and, and just can't describe it because she doesn't have the words. And I think that's one of those striking moments that, you know, is very true. Scientists are great, but some of us need to learn how to express visually things that will help other people. I'm about to have a cat fight in my house. Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> and uh, so I, I that was always a really striking, very telling moment for me that we need to. Okay, you two, knock it off. <laughs> Anyway, I, I've always loved that I'll turn more scientists into poets than we could have both. Yeah, I, um, 
I was distracted by the cat fight, I have to say. <laughs> you know, I think just um, something that I've discovered over the years, and again, again, as I've started this series, is that, you know, art is sometimes in your face, and it's sometimes really, really sneaky. And either way, it is always there. Like, you just, it, it's so, it's so much, like, part of our existence that you just, you know, can't really take it out of anything. And, um then when you talk about the, the the other thing I wanted to say was about poetry, you know, which is that, you know, poetry is, um, you know, like such a, such a language thing, you know, like I, I've, um, I've been living around the world for a little while and like, I, I can only understand properly English poetry. And so I wonder how do we even think about, you know, giving poetry to the, to the universe? <laughs> It is, it is definitely hard to learn poems in other languages. I remember trying to do that in French. And unfortunately, I had a French teacher at the time who spoke in a monotone. And all I could think was, this is how you ruin French poetry right here. So she would read it out loud to us. And it was just, there was no emotion, no inflection. I had no way of really like grasping any of it just by listening. Because, you know, you should be able to, when someone recites a poem for you, you should be able to get some tone through it too. And that wasn't happening. So that was that was very disappointing. So it, you know, it's it's poetry doesn't just rely on the words themselves. It it relies on the emotions and the images that, you know, it it evokes. Absolutely. Seriously, guys, knock it off. <laughs> well, listen, Beth, um, it's really been a pleasure to talk to you. I really appreciated it. Um, thank you for joining me again at this at this early hour. I told you I would do it once. <laughs> and once is all you need. <laughs> yeah, so um I I'll share the the link in chat and then um but you can just look for the SETI Institute on Facebook and scroll down to our groups and that's the only group we have right now is the Art Imaginarium, which by the way, Daniel Futilar did come up with the name of, but our uh, communications team at SETI basically voted on it and said it was the best of the choices we had all come up with. And so we went with that one and we just loved the sound of it. it yeah. Speaking of poetics. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, Cosmo Quest streaming will be back in about two hours with the daily space, uh, which is your daily news roundup and um, community coffee. Again, it's uh, it's, it is a community thing. So if you, uh, if you, if I can do it, then so can you. Um, and if you have something that you want to talk about, uh, get in touch and please throw your ideas out there. It's not that hard. And um, Paranoia is producing and he's doing a wonderful job at it. Thank you so much for that. And um, it makes my life very, very easy. So definitely think about hosting a show. Um, and uh, thank you, of course, to everybody who's been watching and in the chat, um, CosmoQuest is a product of the Planetary Science Institute. Um, so thank you guys for joining and uh, see you for the daily space in just a couple hours. Thanks everybody.